I'm Melissa Prophet, the Education and Communication Specialist for the Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District, and today we are going to take a look at groundwater. Now, groundwater is the water that accumulates beneath the Earth's surface, and we find it in the small cracks and crevices of rock and also other materials underground like sand and gravel. Now, groundwater makes up about 38% of the water supply that we use for agriculture, growing our food right here in the United States. So groundwater is very important. When we think about when pollution like hazardous waste, oil, heavy metals, chemicals are on the ground, well, water runoff that percolates through the soil can bring those pollutants down into our groundwater, contaminating it. So it's vital that we keep our groundwater clean. But let's take a look at how water moves through those different materials like gravel, sand, and clay. Because different soil types affect the way that water moves through these materials. Let's take a closer look. The layer of earth, gravel, or porous stone that yields water is called an aquifer. Aquifers are our source of groundwater that we might draw upon with wells or when irrigating agricultural fields. When looking at the gravel, the sand, and the clay, what can you observe about these materials? One thing you may notice is the difference in the particle size. When looking at the gravel, the particles are quite large in comparison to the sand and the clay. These larger particles fit loosely together, leaving space between them. Now the sand, though smaller than the gravel, is still larger particles than the clay. So there is still room between the particles as they lay loosely together. As we look at the clay, well, this piece of clay looks like one big particle, doesn't it? But if we were to shave off this clay and look at it underneath a microscope, what we would see is that the different particles are tiny flakes. And these tiny particles fit very close together, not leaving much room between the particles. Looking at the gravel, sand, and clay, which material do you hypothesize or Take an educated guess that water can move the fastest through versus the slowest through. Let's test your hypothesis. We can look at the movement of water through these materials with a fun, easy activity. All you need are three 20 ounce plastic bottles with four pinholes poked in the bottom. In each bottle, we will put gravel in one, sand in another, and clay in the third. We want to have the same amount of material in each bottle. Then we will use the same amount of colored water. In this case, I'm using 240 milliliters of the blue water that we will then fill each bottle and look at the output of that colored water to see which material allows the water to flow the fastest through versus the slowest through. Are we ready? Now, because there's only one of me, I'm gonna start pouring from the left and the clay to the sand to the gravel. So we will have to a lot for a slight head start in the clay. Let's see if that makes a difference. What we might notice is that even though the clay was filled with water first, we can easily see that the larger particles of gravel are allowing more water through at a much faster rate. The sand here in the middle is allowing water through faster than the clay, but not at as fast of a rate as the gravel. 
after about 60 seconds, we can see that the gravel has allowed almost all of the colored water to flow through its large particles down into the jar. The sand, because it has smaller particles that fit closer together compared to the gravel, is slowing the water that percolates through. But we're still seeing some water hitting the bottom of the jar there. But even after over a minute, our clay is holding on to the water. These small particles are so tightly packed that the water is not moving quickly through the clay substrate. Therefore, we're not seeing water in the bottom of our jar. So, if you selected gravel as the material that the water would move the fastest through, and clay as the material the water would move the slowest through, you are correct. And it's the properties of these materials that influence how water flows. Our world depends on water, and groundwater is a vital source of this life-giving resource. Thank you for joining me today for this science demonstration.